I look at my dad's generation, and my dad was a lot like I am. He was sort of a mad scientist. In his generation, there wasn't Asperger's. There wasn't high-functioning autism, but a lot of people had a quirky uncle or a neighbor who was really into model trains. That was just part of the culture. There were people who were different. In this generation, now we have a label we put on those people. We say they have PDD-NOS or high-functioning autism or Asperger's syndrome, but they're the same people. They haven't changed. All that's changed is the labels that we use and how much we understand about their differences. How do you feel about the labels? They can be helpful or not. In a positive sense, the labels give us access to services. On the flip side, the labels come with all sorts of stigma attached to them. Autism is a spectrum disorder, which means we're all different. So one label does not apply to all of us. And how we're different even with the same label is very big. I've met people who have light issues that I don't have, but who don't have any of the sound sensitivities that I have, but we have the same diagnosis. We're all different, but we get bundled together. But I look at the label as a word, and the word only has as much power as you allow it to have. I like to ask people who they were the day before they got their diagnosis, and who they were the day after, and what changed the moment a doctor, or a psychologist, or a teacher sat down and wrote the word autism next to their name on a sheet of paper. What changed? What kind of answers do you get to that question generally? When you ask I don't it? get a lot of answers, but I think I think about what changed for me. Well, and what did? When, what was it? As a child, I was different, but I could do whatever I wanted. I could I could have grown up to be president or a rock star or whatever. There was not an expectation that I couldn't try things and succeed or fail. And then I was diagnosed with autism. And they sat me down in a room and told me all of the things I'd never do. I would never live independently. I would never drive a car. I'd probably never have meaningful relationships. I'd never have a career. And I failed their fine motor skills tests and they told my parents I'd never work with my hands. They said I'd never work in any field that required manual dexterity because I failed their tests. And if I'm correct, all of those things that they told you you couldn't do, you're doing. Yes. And it's not that I'm special or different, it's that I'm very stubborn, and I don't like to let other people define me. And I think one of the big problems we have in our culture with autism is we put a ceiling over people's heads, whether they're children or adults. We tell them that because they have this word associated with them, there's all these things they'll never do. And we set them up for failure, and it becomes our expectation. We expect the generation of autistic kids out there right now to fail. We're setting everything up for them to fail. We're telling them what they won't do or what they can't do. We're telling their families to lower their expectations and we're building services around what we're gonna do after they've failed. But the generations before us went the other way. You were just a regular guy and you had to figure it out like everyone else. And there are lots and lots of people with autism who came before us who figured it out and found their place in the world. So I think there's proof that people on Spectrum can succeed. But the difference is how we build them up and support them and whether we set low expectations and help them achieve those or we lift them up to higher expectations that are more challenging but also more fulfilling.